the astute among you might notice that the office looks a little bit different today. Things are like cluttered all over the desk. There are things missing off the wall. We don't have like the sombrero or my bottle of Square Enix tears anymore, which I really miss that thing. And um, there's a reason for that. This is actually the last time I'm going to be coming to you from my grandfather's office. He he passed away uh, about a year ago now, and uh, my mom has found somebody that she wants to spend the rest of her life with, so she's going to be moving out there, and nobody's going to be living in this house anymore, and yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting saying goodbye to this old place. Like, even back when my grandparents lived in California, my grandfather had an office like this, just full of all kinds of cool knickknacks, books on bookshelves, these portraits, pictures, poems that he wrote himself. The work he must have done in these places, the things he accomplished. It makes me want to create my own place, build my own little office, my own den, if you will. My place of thought that I can go to when I need to, well, get work done. So, while I do have to move to a new location, and it's it's not THE move, we're not going up to Ohio quite yet, that's still about like uh, nine, ten months away, but I will find some place to stay in the interim, and don't worry, Bearlock's coming with me. He's just in a box right now getting moved from place to place, but Hopefully the change in scenery won't bother you guys too much, and it'll just go uphill from here. So here's a scenario. For one reason or another, you end up getting a product key for a game you already own. You then contact your friends, or lack thereof, and realize they can't use it either. So what do you do? You've got this perfectly valid copy of a game, but no use for it. This was the problem sites like G2A, Kingwin, and fast to play were designed to solve. Through their services, you can sell that key, pocket a bit of the cash, the developer still gets the money you initially paid for it, and somebody else out there just got a super cheap game. Everybody wins, right? Uh, assuming everyone is as on the level as you are, sure. Spoiler alert, they're not. If you haven't heard about this, the guys at Tiny Build Games recently wrote an article addressing their experiences with G2A.com. In short, not everybody uses these sites in such an innocent way. Some people use bots to scavenge codes from Twitter and Facebook giveaways, essentially robbing some fan of a prize they should have rightfully gotten. One Polygon article actually caught a YouTuber selling a review code of Gravity Ghost through G2A. And most egregiously, there are many merchants on these sites who pick up some stolen credit cards on the dark web, use them to buy literally thousands of keys, and then put them on one of these key reselling sites for half the retail price. Then, when the person who actually owned the credit card initiates a chargeback, guess who has to pay the fee? The storefront. And these aren't small fees either. Remember, we're talking thousands of keys here, and often there are extra fines that are levied against the company that incurs the chargeback. So through this process, the people who made the game are actually losing money for selling copies of their own titles. Oh, but don't worry, it gets worse. When trying to contact G2A and see if there would be any compensation for the financial damages Tiny Build incurred because of these chargebacks, the reply they got was astoundingly deaf to the voices. First, G2A tried to convince Tiny Build that other key distribution sites were the ones selling these keys on the G2A storefront. This is false. Tiny Build both contacted and reaffirmed their relationship with Humble Bundle, Bundle Stars, Indie Game Stand, and Indie Gala. In fact, Indie Game Stand even wrote their own article detailing how they incurred over $30,000 of fraudulent charges one month. Second, G2A refused to provide compensation to Tiny Build. Compensation for a crime, they have definitive evidence happened, mind you. But the real kicker? G2A also said that in order to even investigate this incident and confirm for themselves that fraud happened, Tiny Build would have to work with G2A and sell their keys on the site directly. Yes, G2A expects Tiny Build to undercut their own retail partners, including Steam, just so they can compete with actual, literal thieves. 
This is impossible, because no matter what price they end up selling the game at officially, they will always get undercut by people mass buying keys with money that isn't theirs. And remember, this is following in the wake of last year's controversy involving illicit copies of Far Cry 4, and G2A still insists that it has no responsibility for the people breaking the law on their service. Obviously, word started getting around about this whole debacle, and when the heat started to turn on, G2A first tried to save face by essentially saying, well, if you'd been using our payment system on your storefront, none of this would have happened. And when that inevitably didn't work, they launched a press release trying to discredit Tiny Build's entire case. They gave the publisher a three-day ultimatum to provide a list of keys they believed were fraudulent, a list Tiny Build did not provide because at this point, they didn't exactly expect G2A to act lawfully and responsibly with that kind of information. And frankly, I don't blame them. Grey market storefronts like G2A have a legitimate purpose, but the problem we face is that a solid number of merchants use these sites as glorified money laundering services. And as I've mentioned, the people pulling this crap have a huge financial impact on guys like Tiny Build, Ubisoft, and even Devolver Digital. And you know what the crazy part is? You're getting a bum deal by purchasing your keys on these sites as well, as the developer of Defender's Quest Valley of the Forgotten points out. Think of this in terms of a couple factors. When buying a game key, you're not just spending money. It also takes time, could potentially be inconvenient depending on your methods, and has a moral, and potentially legal, implication as well. By buying a key legitimately, yes, you're spending a good amount of money, but it's usually very quick, very convenient, and is guaranteed not to get you arrested. If you pirate a game, it's totally free, but you do have to find a reliable torrent, scan the downloaded files for malware, and even once you get over those hurdles, you might be dealing with an older version of the game anyway. Not to mention you obviously can't put it on Steam. And, oh yeah, this is illegal, you know. And then there are sites like G2A, which market themselves as the best of all worlds. It's cheap, quick, you get a Steam key, and there's no moral implications whatsoever. Except none of that is true. When you buy on G2A, there's a very high chance that the key you just purchased was bought using a stolen credit card. And as I said before, when the inevitable chargeback happens, the developer themselves lose money for every one of those keys. But the thief still got paid, and so did G2A. So from their perspective, everything's fine. Oh, and remember the Far Cry and Devolver Digital situations? Yeah, when you buy a G2A key, there's not even a guarantee that the product you paid for won't get deactivated against your will. And if it does, you just got defrauded by G2A as well. Unless you have G2A Shield. See, G2A knows full well that most of their stock is stolen goods, so for a nominal fee, they offer an insurance program that guarantees you a legitimate key if it turns out your first one gets canned. So not only are you paying more money than you thought you were for a service you might not even need, not only do you have to go through the hassle of reinstating your own game if the key gets cancelled, but for all the reasons I've already covered, the moral cost of supporting this kind of business is through the roof. And G2A does nothing about it, because hey, they're still making money. And even if they're defending criminals and failing to ban users who have thousands of negative reviews complaining about broken keys, the company is based out of Hong Kong. So what are you gonna do? Sue them? This is why Riot Games banned G2A as an eSports sponsor. This is why there was so much hullabaloo about them being represented at PAX one year. And this is why Lars Doucette's article on the subject actually ends with this quote. And I'm going to read this word for word, because it is unbelievable. Piracy is not theft. G2A is theft. If you have to choose between them, don't be a thief, at least just be a pirate. Holy shit! That is a thing a developer just said! There's no real way to hold G2A liable for what they do, and canceling game keys doesn't solve the underlying problem. The best thing we can do is get the word out. We can spread the relevant information to as many people as possible that sites like G2A are bad for both the industry and the end consumer. 
because the less money they're making, the less of a problem they are. Also, if you follow somebody who takes sponsorship deals from G2A, Kingwin, or anyone else, I implore you to ask them to stop lending legitimacy to this racket. What G2A is doing is not on. So seeing someone with upwards of thousands of followers giving them open support is heartbreaking, not to mention more than a little concerning about that person's character. Together, we can fix this, but only if we're willing to speak with our wallets. I opened my book of life to find a clock, which was ticking, clicking, in reverse. No words of wisdom upon the page nor face, no epic thought of prose, no verse. What is the puzzle in this, I pondered. It's just a device of time, no compass for uncharted oceans, no pathless mountains here to climb. What author's trick did I behold, which would guide me through suspense? Disappointed, I began to close the book. Suddenly, my heart and mind grew tense. My god, what genius! This is my clock, my life. Tis I must write the rhyme, for no one writes it for me. And all I have is time. Beginning to understand why I respected this man so much? <laughs>